My parents always took me to the beach when I was little. I think that's sort of most people who are interested in marine science, they remember being little and playing at the beach. A lot of the other kids were kind of scared of horseshoe crabs and I was like really pumped about horseshoe crabs and like flipping them over and looking at their legs. When I was looking at programs, the majority of them need you to have a relationship with an advisor before you come to the school. The College of Charleston's marine biology graduate program is really unique in that you do not need to have an advisor or even a project to be admitted to the school. I really wasn't sure what I wanted to work on. I didn't feel like I was ready to commit to a two or three year project before really knowing the person who I was going to be working with or what I was going to be working on. A lot of the students coming into this program might not be marine scientists. They're likely biologists or botanists or geneticists. You get a really nice base in marine science. It's four core courses that you're taking kind of all at the same time. You have that year to figure out who you want to work with, a guaranteed teaching assistantship, and somewhere between 13 to 17 students in your first year who you're doing everything with. It's, it's pretty intense. It's a tough year and you work, you have a lot of courses and you're trying to figure out your project and get started on that. So it's kind of a lot going on all at once. And then that all kind of culminates in the oral exams. Once that's over, it's much more into the research focus. We have two species of sturgeon in South Carolina. We have short nose and Atlantic sturgeon, and they're both endangered. I've been looking at the populations of both of those species in the Cooper River, which is the one the big bridge in Charleston goes over. We're either doing reproductive sampling or we're setting gill nets that then catches the fish. We bring that fish up and I remove a portion of its pectoral fin, slice it on the transverse axis and look at it under a microscope. Only a couple people have used fin rays to age sturgeon before. And so I'm the first person looking at how it affects Atlantic and short-dose sturgeon and how successful it is basically. Invasive species is a really interesting aspect of biology. I was looking at some population structure, so abundances, sex ratios, size distributions of the native and invasive crabs. And then I looked at how the invader can influence like population assemblages of the native crabs on the reef. I like the crab as a model system for these like poleward range expansions, especially with how water temperatures are increasing it's gonna be happening more and more often. I got to be out and doing things uh, in the field, and it was the things that I wanted to do. So I had lived my entire life in Hawaii. Never left, really. And I decided that I wanted to have more experience. Um, I was a biology major at the time. I was really interested in marine biology, and I wanted to get some really solid research experience. I became really interested in the physiology of invertebrates. The College of Charleston Marine Biology Program has a great molecular program, and I knew that, that I could go far with that if I went to College of Charleston for graduate school. It's a really collaborative uh, atmosphere out there. And actually one of the most attractive things about the College of Charleston and doing the Grice Marine Biology Program was to work on the Fort Johnson campus. There's a lot of interaction between scientists on all different levels, and I think that that's really important for people who are just getting into graduate school. It was a great way to really be exposed to a wide swath of different topics in marine biology. You're really going to be able to keep an open mind as you go through graduate school and, and have a lot of connections when you leave. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the College of Charleston, to be very clear. I had two really good advisors in graduate school that brought me in and helped develop me as a scientist. That was very valuable for me applying for the Canal Fellowship Program. That was what brought me up to Washington, D.C., and that, that would never have happened if I didn't do uh, the graduate program in marine biology. It's such a key stepping stone to getting you to other places and opening doors that otherwise wouldn't be open. And it's not just in the marine biology or research world, but in a host of other places as well.